Hi, welcome to Pastor Matt's Sermon Podcast. I'm Pastor Matt from Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester, Ohio. So glad you could join me today. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, please bless all who hear these words today. Be with them. Open their hearts and minds to those places where you are most active in the world. All this we ask in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came pretty close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told them to go with, told me to go with them, and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The second reading comes from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. (coughs) And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of life. Our gospel reading comes from John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who comes to show us what true love from God the Father is. Amen. 
So if any of you uh, have raised a finicky eater, then you know the difficulty of getting them to choose good food. My son has always been a finicky eater, and my wife used to always be upset because she would measure what our friends were doing as we were feeding our child, and they would say, my kid is such a good eater, he eats everything. And my wife and I would look at each other and we would say, oh, we feed our kid so that he survives. We figured out that what he liked and what was good for him as far as what we could feed him and he would eat, we did the best that we could. We just wanted to keep him alive. So sometimes we dealt with what was going on with the finicky. And that's part of who we are. It's how we're hardwired. I was finicky, so my son gets that from me. I did not like eggs at all. It didn't matter how they were prepared, scrambled or hard-boiled or fried over easy. I did not like the flavor or the texture of eggs. And, and to this day, eggs plain by themselves, I cannot take at all. So why am I telling you about finicky eating? Well, I'm reminded of Peter sitting on the roof and having his vision. The sheet opens up and all of these creepy crawlies fall out and he hears the Lord say to him, take and kill and eat. And Peter's horrified because he's been following the rules. He knows what good kosher food is and he knows what's appropriate and what's unclean. And he says, Lord, nothing unclean has ever touched my lips. And the Lord says, don't you dare call anything that I have created unclean. This finicky following of the rules is something that infects church life as well. We know exactly how we want our worship experiences to be. We know what we want our sermons to be about. Sometimes we just want to be safe and not challenged. We only want to hear about the love of God and about how good we are. And the truth is, it can be difficult for us to come into church with all of these different people and all of their different preconceived notions of how the world should work. In the church, for example, we have arguments about what is appropriate accompaniment for a worship service. Guitars and drums, are they okay? Or do we need to have organ music like our Lord and Savior Jesus listened to when he was here on earth? So this finickiness causes us to open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to the places where God is and challenges us. Because some of those people who believe differently than we do, who vote differently than we do, who look differently than we do, who have a different political bent or a different understanding of how the world works, they can appear to us to be like the creepy crawlies that show up in Peter's sheet. But we forget that while we may appear normal to one another, we might also look like creepy crawlies to them. And the church has done a lot of damage in the name of Jesus to the world. We have work to do to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which brings me to the second part of our readings this morning, the gospel. The gospel of John, where Jesus tells his followers that they will be known as his followers if they love if they love one another, they will be known as followers of Jesus. Notice how it doesn't say, they will know that you are my followers if you judge other people and judge them harshly, or if you view them as unworthy of being part of your fellowship. The love that God gives to us through Jesus is all-encompassing. In case we haven't figured it out yet, God loves us just like we are, and sent Jesus to show us that love by dying on the cross and rising again to restore relationship so that we could know the love of God. So combining those two things, Peter and his creepy crawlies and Jesus telling us to love one another really shows us that it's important for us to open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to the world at work. And that's challenging. Challenging to look at other people and see them as beloved and beautiful creatures of God. When I preached this sermon last night, 
one of the congregation members came up to me and said, you know, Pastor, I appreciate this love your neighbor and loving others, but it's really difficult when they have such stupid ideas. <laughs> I get that. I, I get it. It is really hard sometimes to love people who make themselves hard to love or who are not open to new ideas or are set in their ways. Or maybe they don't think the way that we do. And yet remembering that it is God who has made them and loves them. Reminds us that we are all broken and we all have stupid ideas. And that God still continues to love us in our brokenness and in our stupidity. Continues to offer grace and salvation and forgiveness. They will know you are my followers if you love one another, Jesus says. The church has work to do on that. We Lutherans aren't good enough about engaging in the public sphere because we are always so keeping our piety so close to our vest, our face so close to our vest. There are other people who speak on, the, on behalf of Christianity who don't speak for us, who don't speak in love. There are a rash of public laws and bills that are being produced right now that are being described as religious liberty laws when in actuality it is a way for some people who proclaim that they are Christian to subject and subvert others who don't believe or don't act like they do or don't fit in their box and that's not love that is judgment and I'll tell you we have been given religious freedom religious liberty it's ensconced in the First Amendment of the Constitution. I can address you here and now because I've been given this freedom. And I have been given freedom to love even those creepy crawlies whom I may not understand, but I know that God has made pure and perfect. And that's the challenge for us, to love and not to judge. Take and eat, the Lord says. Take and eat all of these things that I have made pure and good for you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, may the peace which passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds and faith in Christ Jesus. We ask that you would bless all who hear this word, that they may open their eyes and see those who are creepy crawlies and try to love them as best they can. Help us to create better understanding of your love for the world and the way that you reach out to us through your Son, Jesus. All this we ask in his name. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you his peace. Amen. I'll see you next week.